Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome back to a brand new camp build. Today we're going to be taking advantage of the communist bunker and fence set that was recently added to the game via the atomic shop. And these things are pretty cool, so we're going to put them to use and make a kind of scrappy scavenger camp with them. So, let's have a look, shall we? Okay then, so first things first, let's have a little look at where we are on the map. Now we're in the forest region today, and I've gone right up into the northwest corner of the map. See where we are there, just south of WV Lumberco. So right on the edge of the map, right in the northwest corner, there's Aaron Holt Homestead, Tyler County Fairgrounds, Vault 76 just down here. So good little spot. There's um, a couple of tents that have just been positioned just a little bit north up the river from uh, where we are here. So we're just below a load of disordered trucks next to those. If you walk south from WV Lumber, you'll find the spot on the right easily enough. So, new communist bunkers. We get a couple of these dropped in, well, three. Uh, the limit with these is three of them. So, like a lot of the new sort of prefabs that those have added to the game recently, particularly the Thomas Shop ones, there is a limit to how many you can have in your camp. So, three seems to be the general total. I don't know whether or not this is shared with some of the others. Some of the previous ones I've put in, like the Red Rocket and stuff, do share that kind of three prefabs total so this may be the case here as well but we have these dropped in that's sort of a, a reasonable starting point and if i wanted to go very very military sort of militaristic i think and i might have set them at 90 degrees to each other there but i wanted to kind of have a little bit more of a, a welcoming vibe and just thought it looked a little bit better if we put them on more of a, a 45 degree angle and arrange them towards the back of the camp so we'll tweak these get that dropped in there we go, a little bit of fine tuning re required to get these sort of lined up where I want them. There's one, well there's a couple of issues with these in particular. The one I'm sort of facing right here is that the foundations on these are quite thin. They don't sink very far into the ground, so you see here we have a little bit of an issue with that back corner floating, and it's the same on the other ones as well. So you can sink them down a little bit, but there's only so far you can really go with it. So it's a bit of a, a problem with it if you haven't got particularly flat ground. So. In this case, fortunately, most of that floating is in the back corners, you can't really see it. So by the time we've fully decorated and everything, it will be as good as gone. But that is something to bear in mind if you're using these. So, with those three bunkers in place, we're going to fence the place off. The sort of vibe I'm going for with this build is the idea that it was kind of a pre-war military storage spot. Didn't have much going on here apart from just storage. But it's all fenced off, it uses the bunkers, and uh, some post-war scavengers come along, found this location and thought, you know what, that's a great place to set up shop, and has uh, built it up from there. So you'll see uh, where we're going with the decoration in a little bit. But for right now, I'm sort of trying to figure out where I want the entranceway to be. We're going to go for two of these fence pieces wide. Unfortunately, we don't have gates in these, which are kind of annoying, but... We're going to kind of work around that, so I'm going to use this central bunker to line up the entrance with sort of the entrance to that bunker. So we've got this middle one more or less where I want it, but it needs to go a little bit wider. So I'm going to grab this, shove it across a little bit. We're going to use the sort of silhouette of the original position to guide where we're going to position the fences. So that should about do it. Come on, there we go. And repeat again on this side. And we should have a nice uh, two fences wide gap. Obviously, you can basically set it up any way you like because you haven't got to fit anything in it. But in this case, I went for two wide, and it turned out to be a good idea with something I did later. There we go. So, I'm going to snap these on, and they will do either 45 degrees or 90 degrees. So, it gives you a little bit of flexibility, which is nice. There's one very weird feature about them is that when you sort of manipulate them, you seem to have hold of the object by one of the ends. See here it's sort of rotating around that end piece there. Whereas most other things in the game, in the building system, you hold them by a kind of central point and they rotate on a central axis. So this feels a bit weird to manipulate sometimes and have habits sort of swinging out of your field of view as well. So not quite ideal there. So um, I was saying to you the other day that it's a bit like if you pick an object, object up in real life. But you were to, instead of having your thumb pointing upwards, it was pointing downwards, so your hand sort of turned over. It feels a bit like that, <laughs> which is a very strange sensation when you try to build a ball out, but there we go. However, 
going around the corner didn't with the 45 degrees wasn't really working on this side so we've gone for 90 we're not quite matched up here these things will kind of sink in but they're also a bit funny about it so the best way of doing this is to start at the lowest point and work from there and then it'll clip straight through the ground and look much much more even so that's what we're doing here as you saw before we weren't actually quite meeting up with the edge of the bunker there so i wanted to adjust it so we were as close to that as possible which does mean the initial starting point has kind of gone out the window a bit but it does also mean that we're kind of closer to both where I need it in conjunction with a bunker at one end of the fence and where I want the opening to be at the other so we've seen a minute it kind of works out well could start one end and run around but uh, the chances you'll have to rearrange the whole thing go up a little bit there so so on this side I've used the 45 degree angle because it does work but it's not quite long enough once I take these two in the middle out I'll be left with one fence on the left and two on the right so, um, of the entrance so we're gonna have to tweak this a little bit this angled one on the left here is gonna have to come back to in line with the uh, piece it snapped to there we go like that so now that matches up either side we can adjust things a bit but all this is supposed to look like a somewhat more military location so having things at odd angles um, and not having them not match up wouldn't really keep with the feeling there so we've got a slight issue here in that it's not going quite far enough to meet up with the bunker again. On this case, however, because the rest of the fence does match up, I'll move the bunker. So we'll dip that one fence post down and then snap this one back in. We're going to go up rather than uh, the lower level there. There we go. Sorted. So we'll jump around the other side and just move this bunker across a little bit, which will close that gap nicely. And it also leaves us a little bit of space just to the right of it here, which is going to be handy when it comes to decorating this place, because I'll put uh, a generator and a water purifier in that gap and then add a few extra bits and pieces just to uh, give it a little bit more life. But that's the fences in place. Looks reasonably good. We'll head to this back right corner again. Back left corner, rather. And because I want to use the space here, I need to use three of the fences because we need a little bit of extra room and using two just won't afford us quite enough here. So fortunately, both these bunkers and the fences are reasonably willing to snap through each other. So that's quite handy, or at least the bunker's willing to allow the fence to snap through it. It's perhaps a better way of putting it. So there we go. You can see it's clipping through, but it's not showing inside. So we're not too far off where I want to be, but it's a little bit too far over to the right. Clips a little bit too much through the bunker for my liking there. So a little bit of adjustment is required. Grab this middle one, nudge it back and across a little bit and try again which actually took a couple of attempts <laughs> it's often easier i should note there that um, just to place the fence down and then pick it up and move it afterwards just because it behaves slightly better it stays in the middle of your field of view a little more so that is considerably better still want to tweak it a little bit more but that's uh, pretty much where i want it there we go much better now a little bit of clipping going on but it's not too much and it's roughly even on both sides Spend as long as you want trying to get it exact if you want, but that was good enough for me. On this side, we've got this big tree that's kind of blocking most of the space, so we have to work around that. It's going to stop us using this little gap, so small offences for this bit. That's probably about as good as we're going to get. Again, we've got a bit of floating, but we'll make do. So there we go. We have our area fenced off. Time to make it look a little bit more like a scavenger camp, sort of junkyard vibe going on here. So I want to kind of reinforce and add some additional texture to these uh, barbed wire fences. So we're going to use the new tyre barricades. As you can see, in order to get it to clip through and sit closely enough, we're going to have to use a little bit of trickery. So I've positioned those barricades where I want them. We're going to use a flamethrower to destroy it. Just like that, the flamethrower trap. Get this fellow out of the way again. And now we can snap the fence back on. The communist fence, supposedly. Never knew fences had such uh, political inclinations, but there you go. So we'll repeat it again on this side. We'll position this barricade as close as I can so it's lined up. Pull this fence out. Nudge it back so that it's where I want it. There we go. Sitting a lot more snugly now. And once again, we're going to need to use the flamethrower. So, drop that in. Pop out the menu and activate it. And there we go. Touch 21 did somewhat limit the uh, functionality of using the flamethrower to destroy things and replace them. Some objects, even though they've been destroyed, won't let you uh, clip other things through them, but 
it works well enough for what we're doing here. So that's got us a good strong start. So we're going to mix up our textures, use a few different bits and pieces just to add a little bit more depth and a little bit more life to this fence line. There we go, some concrete tyres. Useful little trick here. If you have a look at these tyres and you grab them from the end like that, you can see along their length, it makes it much easier to sit them closer to another object. I don't know if it's sort of bypassing an issue in the game or it's just a visibility thing, but it does help. So, worth doing that sometimes. Once again, I'm going to use the junk fences that were added recently and try and shore up this edge a little bit. Obviously, the supports on the back of the junk fence are getting in the way. We could reverse it and just... Uh, to go for the reverse junk fences approach, you'll be able to sit it much closer then. But I wanted it facing the right way around, so at least for this bit. So, flamethrower again. Get rid of that. Now we can just snap this fence back in. There we go. And we repair the junk fence. Repair, not scrap. There we go. <laughs> Sorted. So, jumping over to the other side. Here I wanted to initially use this larger concrete tyre wall, just because the dip in the ground would have made it look a little better, but unfortunately it was going to sit way too far away for some weird reason. And a bit more luck with a smaller one. There we go. Come around the end again and we can line it up a little better. There we go. Snug. Of course we've got a little bit of floating here, which is slightly annoying. Especially in light of the fact that uh, when you select it, it'll just drop down a bit, which is very nice. That would have been perfect. Nope, it's got to pop up again. Try again. No, still being annoying. <laughs> Not quite cooperative. But what can we do? <laughs> so, as we've got a little bit of floating going on in that back corner and this side is not quite as good as I would like it to look, we're going to stick with the junk heap vibe, partly because we've got a load of crushed vehicles on the left here, you just sort of see in the corner. So I'm going to use this trailer bed here, truck bed, just to uh, kind of block it off as well as conceal some of the shortcomings in the, the terrain, or the positioning with the terrain. So here it kind of stops you going around there and looks good from the road, which is where most people are going to see it from, myself included. So we get the desired result and it hides the shortcomings quite nicely. So heading around inside, I wanted a little farm area over on this side, but with the uneven ground and the vibe of the rest of the build, I thought I'd use these planters rather than just planting directly into the ground. Looks pretty good, it's clipping through the ground okay there. So both of these came from the Raider and Settler packs that were released about the time Wastelanders launched. There were uh, an additional thing you could pick up with a few outfits and a few other bits and pieces in there. So that's what, where I've got these from. I don't think they're available anymore, so you might have to uh, hunt around for alternatives if you want to build something similar. But this is what we're going to roll with for now. Unfortunately, we've got a little floating going on here. And uh, not a great deal I can do about it, so we're going to just slide that concrete tyre underneath and assume they've uh, cut the wheels off of it so that they can have it properly supported. It wasn't strictly speaking necessary given that I put this extra minecart here, but I like to know it's done right. <laughs> but we're going to repeat the same procedure on this corner as well, because we've got the same problem. We have to assume they've cut the trucks off the bottom there. Spin the concrete tyre around a little bit, because for some reason some angles are more forgiving than others. And there we go, looks properly supported. So jumping on a little bit, I was expecting to show considerably more of my decoration of this uh, build than I actually have had time to do, which is, I have mixed feelings on, but rather than having an hour long video, I thought we'll just show a few key points. So initially here, I put all the furniture around the outside, which works okay, but with the rounded walls, it's a bit of an issue. So we're gonna go for a variation on what we did last time at the, um, pylon and go with something that sticks out into the middle of the room. So try to get a few bits and pieces here. Wasn't quite happy with a few variations, so what I ended up settling on was having the taller backed objects, so the tinker's bench and the weapons workbench, which we're going to swap out in just a moment, on the right. And then having lower backed objects like the armor bench and I'm going to swap the uh, chemistry station out for the other style as well behind them. It just seems to look a little better see what we mean in just a moment. And while I get myself sorted on that, it's worth pointing out another slight issue with these bunkers. For the moment, the nav mesh is a little all over the place. There we go. You can see that doesn't quite work there, but it looks better when you flip it round to the other side. 
Yeah, so the nav mesh is a bit iffy on these, which means everything you place inside ends up floating. I would have liked to put rugs and things like that down, just to make uh, particularly the central of the three bunkers look a little bit more homely, but unfortunately that is really obviously floating when you do that, so it is what it is. It should be, from what I understand, a reasonably easy fix, so hopefully Bethesda will be getting on that fairly soon, probably with the next patch I would imagine. We've got a lot to be working through at the moment, so I can't imagine there'll be a hotfix between now and then. But, that's one thing we kind of have to endure with these for the moment. That and also the sound design for the doors is a little weird. For some reason, the sound of the doors operation, an opening sound, kind of metallic rattling noise, goes on for a lot longer than the door takes to open, which is weird. But, they do look cool, these things, and as we'll see in a moment, I'm quite happy with the final result of it, so I'll... Uh, Put up with the shortcomings until Bethesda fix it, which I have no doubt they will. So, now we've got those benches in. You can see the way they back onto each other looks much better than some of my early efforts. They kind of sit much more snugly together and just look more complete in the configuration I've got. But when you dress the space up a little bit more, try and make it look a little more packed in, just to keep, keep the vibe that we're going to have for the rest of the camp. I'll grab a few of these spare bits and pieces and manoeuvre them inside. I'm just going to use these smaller stash box type, um, I don't know what they are, tables, drawers, <laughs> units, I suppose, rather than the larger one anyway, uh, just because it fits a little bit more with the space and leaves a bit more room to manoeuvre around it. So I'm just going to nudge this chemistry bench over a little bit so that everything's a little more flush. Works fine on that end because we need some room for the cogs to work on the armour bench. Drop our little minigun on its display there. There we go, starting to come together. Need a few gaps plugging there. Stick a metal chair in, because why not? And a few more stash boxes just to give it a little bit of life. A couple of the nuclear winter ones here, just gonna stack on the side. I actually ended up tweaking the design on the right there and putting um, an ammo converter in. Just about fits. We'll see that in the tour. Now I'll drop the extra stash box in there. Gonna go with the mole miner one, because it's a little more industrial looking. Get a little bit of extra light in here. I also took that um, toolbox on the right, you can sort of see there, out and replaced it with a generator because I needed something to power those lights on the wall at the back there. Could probably have done it using a generator up outside, actually, but I didn't put that in until much later, so. We'll tuck our camp unit in here just to uh, get it out of the way. There we go. Tweak that chair. And with the general idea here, Sorted, we'll jump on and have a look at the fully decorated product. And here we go. <laughs> As I say, I did want to show you a little bit more of the decoration, but rather than being here all day, we'll, we'll uh, move on and discuss it during the tour instead. So, we'll come up the road a little bit and get a look at this from the outside. It fits in quite nicely, sits nicely on the side of the road there. I'm quite pleased with how it's come out. So we've got a few bits and pieces layered up beside the fences, make it look pretty cool. I did try using one of the completed guard posts, one of the wood ones, in front of the gate there, but it was just, they looked too big and too obnoxious. So I went with the sort of more manually designed one there, a few punji boards on the top, just to create something that's a bit scrappier and a bit less overbearing. And there we go, have a little look around the corner, see the side. See, it uh, kind of fits with the destroyed truck in the, in the gap there, so it goes quite well with that kind of scrappy feeling. Really pleased to see that that billboard fits in the gap as well. It's uh, almost an exact fit, that, so it's quite cool for a nice little entranceway. It's so not completely sold on the look of it, but I, I think I'm happy with it. <laughs> so, one of the big things I've done in here to really bring this to life is pack in as much sort of rubbish, I suppose, <laughs> as possible. Counterintuitive though that may sound. So there's lots of stash boxes, lots of appliances, just random bits and pieces, each with a, a little lamp on it somewhere. That just shoved in the gaps that we have around the camp. And it just makes it look like some wastelander has been dragging back anything they thought might be useful to their camp for quite a long period of time. It creates a kind of junkyardy feel. It works quite well. The power on the station sucked in the corner there. I did spend some time trying to get this to work, but uh, we've got a, a reverse junk fence at the back and the power armor station fit between the legs quite nicely there, so that's just sat on the foundation. It doesn't look great on the uneven ground if you don't lift it up a little. Unfortunately, couldn't fit any stairs in there, so not ideal. 
We've got a generator in the back there with the water purifier just in front of it, and a lot of stuff just piled around it to make it look look more complete. Close up the big open spaces in there and give it that junkyard feel. And same thing over here by our little planters. A few bits and pieces just chucked in there. Kind of random nature of it all really does give it that junkyard feel. It works quite well. Happy with that kind of relatively long-term camp looking vibe to it. <laughs> Let's have a little look inside. So here we have our little vending area. Not turn the vendors on for uh, convenience for the moment, but I had a little bit of an issue trying to decorate this place. I think uh, putting a rug down, as I said before, would have made a big difference here. Going for a cycling light at the top, just to give it a splash of colour. But uh, obviously with the floating issue we currently have, the rug's going to not look good at all, so I have to make do with as is. Slight drawback to those cycling lights, of course, being that you have to wire them up directly, which is kind of annoying, but they do add a nice splash of colour and sort of fill out the lighting, which I quite like a bit in there, so... We're going to make do with. Open up our little living quarters here. A bed dragged in. That uh, safe over there is a stash box added by the uh, new communist pack along with these bunkers. So that's quite a cool addition. I like that one a lot. A little kind of office come bedroom space here for our resident. Finally picked up one of the tabletop TVs. So that'll do for a, a workstation. Computer type deal. A few little bits on the wall. I'm going with the yellow cycling light at the top just to complement the light from the lamps a little bit more and from the posters as well. Which gives it a little more illumination and a little splash of colour. Slightly closer look at some of my uh, scrappiness around there. Just a few bits and pieces tucked in. We'll have a look at the finished uh, crafting room. There we go. For some reason that, that tree is determined to grow back through anything you put on it. So sadly it won't stay bulldozed. <laughs> See it's come right through the bunker and the uh, workbench there. But... Not much we can do about it, unfortunately, unless I move the uh, whole thing, so we'll have to live with it. I've not got the uh, ammo converter tucked in there, as you can see, I've moved things around a little bit, took a, a couple of those um, wooden stash boxes out a little bit, just to make a bit of room, but just enough space to move around, access all the uh, workbenches, which is cool. It gives it a nice, completed, busy look. I like that the Voltec generator has got the same sort of colour scheme as the ammo converter as well, so it looks like it's part of that unit. So that works quite well on that side. All in all, it came out quite nicely. And I wanted a little fire pit in the middle here, which you can kind of stack these on top of each other, and the slope of the ground and the long grass kind of hides the fact that you've got a bit of floating going on, mostly here. But I would much prefer to have a full circular version of this so that we can... Uh, just give it that slightly more finished look for when you're putting it in the middle of an open space like this. But for now, it kind of works. I assume it's sheltering the fire from the wind a little bit on the side, perhaps. <laughs> but there we go. One communist pack based uh, junkie scavenger camp. So I do hope you found that uh, interesting and enjoyed that one. If you did, please do hit those subs and likes for me. It's always very much appreciated. Social media links, merch store, and channel memberships are available via the description if you're interested in such things. Support is humongously appreciated there. And do try and join us for one of the live streams as well. We're having tons of fun with those. For now, I'll say thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.